I'm Laura Grenning at the Grenning Gallery in Sag Harbor, and today we're going to talk about the Bretzky Bootco Two Man Show. Should have done a little more. <laughs> <laughs> about the Bretzky Boot Code Two Man Show, and we're gonna walk over here to look at these two really quintessential Bretzky paintings. Carl Bretzky was born in 1954. He lives in Minnesota. He comes to the Sag Harbor area a couple times a year to get some um, information to make his paintings. He does sketches, he does little paintings, and sometimes he takes photographs. What's so interesting about Bretzky's take on the local landscape is he's employing a thing called the prismatic palette, where you're going from, if you remember from science class, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet. And he's captured it absolutely beautifully. He's also composed it beautifully. A little bit about Bretzky's background, he actually was a interventional radiologist for 30 years before he became a full-time painter. An interventional radiologist is somebody who does, who's a surgeon who operates under x-ray. As a result of spending all those years looking at the black and white in the x-ray, Bretzky has an incredibly um, heightened sense of the color of light when he sees it. And that's what this painting is, is really about. Ostensibly, or um, the narrative is walking down Main Street in Sag Harbor. But what I want you to look at is all the different colors of light that he has to inform and to construct this composition. He's got the neon lights and the Sag Harbor sign, but then he's got the store lights here. He's got a kind of a yellowish light here in the, in the entryway. He's got a green light in the background, and then he's got this peach colored street light, and then these two bright blue white lights of the, of the car. He's using these, these notes of color the way a musician would use notes in a, in a musical composition. And he's doing it beautifully. Another interesting thing about Karl Bretzky is that when he was in high school, he worked for a photographer. So unlike many of the classically trained painters, he has an incredibly high, uh, highly defined sense of composition. And almost every one of his paintings is, is very well composed, in addition to being incredibly sensitively executed, but also um, very, very subtle look at light and the color of light. That pretty much encapsulates what draws me to Bretzky, and obviously everyone. These are two sold paintings. As we walk down here, these, this is a beautiful sunset, and this is a beautiful moon painting. So these are two uh, paintings that are available by uh, Karl Bretzky. Again, the nocturnes. He does a beautiful job. This is a nocturne that he did. This is one of my absolute favorites. It's called Harbor Truck 2, and it's a food truck, and it looks like some, food, some restaurants. It's a, a plein air painting, you can tell because of the the movement and the less, um, less sharp edges. And to me, that makes the painting really vibrate. And again, we have this little color light here. We have the peach colored street lights. We've got the blue light here. We've got the, looks like red lights inside the restaurant. And then again, that's a reflected light um, down there. The overall effect here is, is a vibrant and kind of interesting painting. Um, and some people have said about um, Karl Bretzky's work, especially The Last Waitress, which we'll drop in right around now because it's sold, but it's in the window, so we can't really do a video of it. That painting, as well as some of these others, really feel like um, uh, Edward Hopper, who's actually having a show right now at the Whitney. Um, I find his paintings very American and tapping into that American feel, which is what Hopper's known for. But Hopper was a little depressed. I don't feel that. So this is kind of like Hopper without the, um, without the angst. <laughs> um, and here's one more of Sag Harbor. This is behind Sag Harbor Main Street. In the evening in Sag Harbor, there's, it's like a light show. And he's captured a very, very interesting a uh, series of colors that's chartreuse back, you know, background or skylight with the street lights from the main street with the, the shadow in the foreground. Very interesting composition, 
beautiful, beautiful, original color. It must have come from nature. He didn't make this up. There's two more paintings in the back there. There's one of the store next door, which is a fabulous painting. We'll drop that in here too. And there's another one of Main Street in Sag Harbor. But Carl Bretzky is one of several artists that I've recruited from across the planet to come here and make some paintings. So now we're gonna segue over to Butko, the other painter in this show. Do you have a question? Yes, I was wondering why <laughs> did you pair Butko with Bretzky? Oh, okay, so I am very interested in, and I've been inviting artists to Sag Harbor for 25 years because I wanted to see with their training and their eyes, I wanted to see how they saw the local landscape that I loved so much, whether it was a beach scene or a street scene or fishing. Um, I really wanted to see these really refined painters turn their attention to what I love out here. And so I've just shown you the, the Karl Bretzky works, which I think are just very beautiful and very original take on our Main Street life. Um, and now we're gonna shift over to Budko, who has very similar training. He's classically trained. Um, Budko, uh, Victor Budko was born in Moscow in 1978 into a family. Uh, he's the third generation painter. And in that culture and at that time, painters were highly revered and very well taken care of. So he has been a painter from the beginning. Um, he has that Russian academic training you see the influence of Leviton and Repin. There's a more impressionist approach. He also has a wonderful sense of composition. Um, so this painting is called Cloudy Sunset at Deering Harbor. Deering Harbor is a, a sailing haven over on Shelter Island. Um, and since I was a child in the 60s, I shouldn't say that. Take that out. <laughs> um, Actually take it out? <laughs> maybe. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, this has been one of my most favorite places in the world my whole life. Uh, and again, he has a very original look at it with these, um, these lavender bands looking out across. There's this one dory, a small sailboat, I mean a small um, rowboat that's kind of just washed ashore. You see a little bit of the green, there's green rocks over there. Um, but it's such an interesting and vibrant like approach to put that salmon colored reflection Just paint it right through the thickness uh, the imp that's called impasto the thickness of the paint of the Sun as it's setting um, This is probably done in August because that's what the coloring is in August. I just think it's a gorgeous Shelter Island painting. It's also a major painting um, again, he has a wonderful sense of composition, you know, dividing the canvas into thirds and just observing, very similar to Bretzky, that, that, that red, orange, yellow, blue, green going up the sky. And here's another daytime painting of, um, I just, before we leave this area, this is Deering Harbor during the day. And this shows you more of his Impressionist roots with the shadows um, here. Luko has a tendency, at, which I love, because of his confidence, he tends to outline some of his foreground objects, whether it's the boat or the trees. And that outline just, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Manet. It shows his confidence, it shows his ability to draw. I think it flattens the canvas a little, which makes it a little more um, contemporary. Painting was done probably around noon. You can tell because, well, maybe, maybe one or two, the shadows of the trees are not very emphasized and the, the, the lightness of the sky and the, and the sea are about the same. So this is, it's much harder. You have to be a very good draftsperson to paint um, an oil painting in the middle of the day. Many painters tend to choose the beginning of the day or the end of the day because of the, flat, the flatness of the light. Um, but his, he's so attuned to color and light that it, it's a success. I love this painting. Okay, so let's go on. I want to show you another fabulous painting from Deering Harbor. My goodness, he's painting a lot in Deering Harbor. This one is Sunset at Deering Harbor by Victor Butko. Many people don't think of a mauve sky, uh, but that was the light effect that day. And uh, his sincerity and interest in capturing that um, shows a boldness. Um, he's willing to take some chances and he's painting right into the sun. You can see the shadows are going right. That's another very challenging thing for a plein air painter. 
uh, and I think he's really done a great job. Many people here in Sag Harbor, where John Steinbeck lived for the last 15 years of his life, he had a property that was very similar to this with a little writing studio that looks a lot like this. So many people come in and think this is um, the Steinbeck property. It isn't, sadly, but it is uh, what, what we have from, you know, this is a, a little boat house over in Deering Harbor. The house that connects to this property is across the street, and this is where they would put their boating things. But again, you can see Deering Harbor has clearly captured Victor's attention. This is one of the more masterful paintings of, uh, of this year. One of the other things that Victor does, he does a lot of nocturnes as well. You have to be pretty, um, pretty sensitive in your eye and in your hand to be able to accomplish that. On either side of this nocturne is the sunset at Silver Pond. This is actually Deer Park Lane in, on Shelter Island. Um, this was this is a diptych that sold right away at the beginning of the uh, the beginning of the show. But this painting um, is is a gorgeous painting. Both of these, um, all three of these paintings are backlit, which means again your foreground is is in shadow um, because he's looking again at the at the moon. Um, this one this one was done up in up in um, Maine, uh, but. Uh, I, I just think it's wonderful, you know, uh, we met Victor in 2016, he was one of eight painters that we invited from Russia, Ben Fenske and I created a group called the Russian American Painting Alliance, and uh, he's the main painter that we garnered from that experience. He actually ended up marrying another painter in, a, in the States and staying, he lives up in the Boston area. However, right now he's in, he's in Russia. He goes home for a couple months every year. Again, I think that this is so subtle. If you come close and get, get up here, you can see you know, how he's really responding. And, um, and that's how it, it looks when you're painting. And he's painting en plein air. He's painting out there um, when that moon is rising. And there's one other painting I want to show you on the way out. To tie it together, again, I put these two together because they're both painting local landscapes, but they had, I believe, very similar training, very different approaches. Um, this is a Carl Bretzky painting called Cold Day on the, by the Tracks. I just love that the, the whole thing is, is, a, is just like a bunch of cool blue and white colors, except for this hot little point here, which is the old school bus with its red reddish yellow lights um, you can you can feel the temperature because he's he's really controlled the palette to to make it very crispy and cold <laughs> um, so i just think this is a wonderful uh, composition it's beautifully executed it you feel the coolness and then the heat of what it's probably like in that school bus i love this painting even the smoke going up kind of connotes um, warmth and heat. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Come to the Grenning Gallery where this show comes down in a few days. Um, uh, and then there'll be a, another show, The Gems, coming up next week. Um, and if you have any questions, go to grenninggallery.com. You can look for us on Instagram and also you could call 631-725-8469. Um, if you want to um, ask me anything about these paintings. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. <laughs>